Meghan Markle celebrates 42 while it is being reported that she and Harry were not invited to Balmoral on the first anniversary of Queen Elizabeth's death. This is sort of a, a special event, but it is like, again, an open invitation. I don't know if, you know, they, they would get that sort of formal invitation or would it matter? I don't think they would want to be there. It's definitely a room full of family members who probably still aren't on great terms with them. Plus, Roger Federer spills about his friendship with Catherine, and we find out what kind of grandmother Queen Camilla really is. Plus, Prince Harry is headed to trial. CEO of West Coast Trial Lawyers Nima Romani breaks it all down. We're still going to get a trial because a lot of cases settle, but I think this is the type of case where the prince really wants to send a message. We've got that plus so much more in today's Royally Us. Hello to our fellow royal lovers and welcome to Royally Us. I'm Christina, that's Christine, and I feel like we are definitely settling into the summer months because it's a bit quiet, but a lot of news on the Harry and Meghan front. We're into the summer season. The, you know, the royals throughout the UK are very, very quiet, but the royals in LA have some really interesting stories this week. Very, very interesting. We're going to get to it in just a second, but if, like always, see what you guys had to say about last week's show. Parker says, I really like how Fergie shares little peeks behind the scenes without selling out her family. m &H should take notes. I feel like we've talked about this. We really do enjoy this podcast and the little tidbits of information. I think she does it really nicely. Absolutely. And, you know, she has a really successful career as an author. She does a lot of public speaking, but still sort of flies under the radar. And for them, you know, it's really interesting to watch her, her own life trajectory since leaving the royal family. Definitely. And then Margaret says, so who's putting out the statement about their marriage if they aren't going to address the rumors? I hope they stay together. They deserve each other. And I hate to see kids shuttle between parents. Yes, we would hate to see anything bad happen between Harry and Meghan um, because obviously they have two small children involved, but we're going to get into it a little bit later. But they're telling us that they're not going to be addressing these rumors. And, you know, why should they if they're just rumors? <laughs> yeah, it's it's an interesting sort of thing. You know, you say nothing and then people speculate. You say something and then people speculate. It's again, they're stuck in a no win situation. 100%. All right, let's get into the news of the week. And King Charles stepped out in Scotland to officially open Eight Doors Distillery. The business is the most northerly mainland whiskey distillery in Scotland. How come we weren't invited to this? And is producing <laughs> the village's first Scotch whiskey since 1837. He was greeted by Eight Doors Distillery owners Carrie and Derek Campbell and ceremoniously ceremoniously unveiled a plaque which was appropriately perched atop a barrel. He then moved to the distillery shop to meet staff and had a sweet exchange with some uh, young boys who dramatically bowed when they met the monarch. Yes, yeah, so this is definitely the perks of the job, right? <laughs> I don't get to do this in my day to day work. I mean, yeah. it's really, un I guess this yeah. is the perks of being the king. <laughs> they didn't really mention if there was a whole tasting, you know, <laughs> did they sit back and sort of, you know, try some out? Out. um but it sounded like a fun event i love that the king you know normally this is a really really quiet season for the royals um but the king has stepped out just a couple times even if it's only like once a week it's nice to see that he's still sort of getting out into the communities especially up in scotland where he isn't always you know he's not there so frequently but getting right. to make those visits while he's there it's probably really special to those people oh, i'm sure definitely um this was fun roger federer we love roger federer and princess Catherine's uh friendship and he opened up a little bit about it to the new york times and revealed that it was actually a, a treat to watch wimbledon with her he said it was so fun sitting next to princess Catherine. i know her quite well she's an avid tennis fan and she plays herself he also gave a glimpse into what it was like inside the royal box um and said sometimes we have to be careful we don't speak to much you can talk and then it's super quiet and then you have to applaud um as we know they sat in the royal box together on july 4th during the july 4th men's finals as men's singles final i would i love this and uh, you know you got to take your tennis tips from roger federer he knows best <laughs> i know i i really love this friendship you know kate's such an avid tennis player she's played tennis for so long mm -hmm. and i was really thinking about that first introduction where you know Princess Catherine, who was probably maybe was she still Kate Middleton? Was she the Duchess of Cambridge at the time? She's probably pretty new to the royal fold, and she meets Roger Federer, who she's a huge admirer of. Fast mm. forward, they're friends. They're sitting at, watching Wimbledon together. I mean, what a strange, you know, series of events. It must be really bizarre for her. This must, I imagine this is one of those things that she sort of is like, oh my goodness, look at my life. <laughs> right, totally. And I'm sure yeah. he's like the same way. Oh my goodness, look at my life. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's gotta work both ways. I love it. Yeah. 
Um, well, in a new video that was released um, by the Duke of Duchess of Sussex, they surprised some recipients of the first ever Responsible Technology Youth Power Fund grants with phone calls. They were all smiles when they called some of the recipients from a, a bright garden. So take a look. Thank you for doing everything that you do. Our kids especially are incredibly grateful. <laughs> um, they don't know it yet. They don't know it yet. But they but will. So good to talk to you. Bye. Bye. Thanks, everyone. <laughs> Have a good take one. Care. Bye. Bye. Yeah, I love this. This was so great that they took some time. They really surprised these recipients and it seemed that they had um, really great conversations. And this was the first time that we'd actually seen Harry and Meghan together in quite some time. Yeah, this was a really, really cute video, um, really tied into work that's really important to Prince Harry. It's This was a great example of using their platform to promote the issues that are most important to them. Um, and again, sort of quietly in the background, we, you know, we, there wasn't a, too much fanfare about this, just the video was released. And I think that the people who received those calls were probably really grateful and, and sort of flattered um, for, you know, that to be in, sort of announced to them in a special way, a whole video, you know, it's not just like an email in your inbox. It was yeah. actually a bit of grandeur to it. So I thought this was a really, really great move for them. I love this. All right. Well, let's keep the Harry and Meghan train going and spill some royal tea because like we said, that there's all these rumors and going around about their marriage and, you know, their careers and things like that. And through all of this, we are hearing that they have managed not to turn on each other. So a source tells us so much of Harry and Meghan's time together has felt like overcoming strife from all sides. They just do it together. They rely on each other for strength and always have. Um, they're, you know, plotting their next move with a source telling us they want to figure out how they can best expand the entertainment side of things, which we'll get to in actually just a minute. And, af and as of all those uh, divorce rumors, we say Harry and Meghan believe that feeding into that false narrative only gives it more attention. Sure, their relationship has challenges, but they are 100% committed to making their marriage work. As we know, she just celebrated her 42nd birthday. A lot of people were like, oh, the royal family didn't wish her a happy birthday. But I think that we've kind of ended that. <laughs> Uh, well, that's one of those things where sometimes they do, sometimes they yeah. don't. Most and then remember for a while there was like they were commenting on each other's posts. Mm -hmm. The problem with like starting those things is that when there's any inconsistency, people sort of look for reasons. I think there's just an inconsistent social media manager over right. the palace. Um, but she, yes, she did celebrate. Um, her birthday reportedly saw the Barbie movie with her friends, which I absolutely love. Megan's always had a good gang of girlfriends around her. So, um, but imagine showing up to see the Barbie movie, you know, you're all dressed up in pink and you look over the next group is like Megan Markle and her friends. <laughs> that would be amazing. Yeah. She was supposedly there with Portia de Rossi, who of course is Ellen DeGeneres' wife and an actress herself. And, you know, I'm sure people, like you said, you know, you're eating your popcorn and you're like, oh my God, <laughs> <Thank you. laughs> um, it's got to be a, a fun way to celebrate her 42nd birthday. She also stepped out for dinner um, with Pr Prince Harry as well. So I'm sure she was well celebrated, but like you said, yeah, social media manager is inconsistent. Don't think that Prince William is posting, uh, scrolling through his photo album, trying to find the perfect picture of Megan to post on her birthday. Let's be real here. Yeah, I know. It's such an interesting non-story that we sort of see every year, whether it's the anniversary, the Archie's birthday, Lily's birthday, Megan's birthday. I think it's just sort of inconsistency. Megan and Harry don't really want that limelight. Again, we're they're sort of in a they're in a tough period. We've talked about it before where like if they bring up the the things of the past, it sort of adds to the negative press. And so they're doing the best thing and that they're moving on, you know, releasing the videos um, with the technology initiative, going out on date nights together and hanging out with their friends and just sort of moving forward with new projects. Yes, so yes, and speaking of, so the, <laughs> the, uh, the Sun is reporting that Prince Harry and Meghan have purchased the film rights to Meet Me at the Lake, which is a romantic novel written by Canadian author Carly Fortune, and it was published just back in May. The Sun says the film adaptation of the book will be folded into the couple's Netflix deal, reportedly worth $100 million. Not 100% confirmed if this is true or not, but definitely an interesting next step. I, I have not read the book, but what I've uh, seen is that there are maybe some parallels to Megan and Harry's life. Uh, you know, one of the characters in the book, maybe their mother passes away by a car accident. They're dealing with some postpartum depression, things like that. So like I said, I haven't read the book. If you have in the comments, please let us know if you think that this is a um, a good move for them, but definitely an interesting move. Yeah, I would love to know because I haven't read the book either. I hadn't even heard of it. Heard of it. So yeah. it's such an interesting 
move for them to, um, you know, purchase film rights. I think this could be a really interesting avenue. You know, Megan was a really avid reader. She would oh. share her book recommendations on Instagram and on the TIG all the time. So I would love to see if this sort of opened up. I'm all about books. I'm all about books getting turned into movies because mm-hmm. I think that just gets more people reading. Um, so I think this is, I'd be really interesting to see. I'd be really interested to see where this develops. Is this story true? And is it sort of, you know, leading into any future projects with Instagram or a website or a right. book club? You know, what What does that look like moving forward? Yeah, there were some rumblings going around that maybe Megan's returning to Instagram as well. So we'll have to have to stay tuned to see what the next steps are. But this is interesting. Again, it hasn't been 100% confirmed, but there has been some reports that Meghan and Harry will not be invited to join the family at Balmoral Castle to honor the first anniversary of Queen Elizabeth's death. Um, multiple sources have uh, claimed to page six that they received no outreach from senior royalists to attend the event on September 8th. Insiders actually told The Sun if they are not included in any of those plans, they will find a way to mark the significance in their own way. So we did report that King Charles, Queen Camilla and the royal family will be heading to Balmoral to uh, commemorate the uh, the day. But I mean, not surprising that they're not invited. <laughs> No, well, it's not surprising. You know, it's not surprising at all. My understanding is that there's sort of an open invitation sure. for the August bank holiday weekend, which is that last weekend in August, mm-hmm. that everyone sort of um, heads up to Balmoral, and then that is also that that happens every year everyone tends to go there's usually a big family shoot and that's where we tend to get those big grandchildren photos with her majesty the queen if you remember the one that was released um quite recently that was taken that august bank holiday weekend which was just about a week before her majesty had passed away Mm -hmm. so this is sort of a, a special event but it is like again an open invitation i don't know if you know, they, they would get that sort of formal invitation or would it matter? I don't think they would want to be there. It's definitely a room full of family members who probably still aren't on great terms with them. <laughs> yeah, now sources tell us weekly that there's still very little communication, which is what, you know, we've heard in numerous interviews as well. So uh, yeah, it seems like not going to be a, a great big family reunion happening anytime soon. <laughs> yeah, I don't think that happening, right. which is okay. Yeah. Moving on with they have their own things going. I think maybe we're turning a corner with Harry and Meghan where they're just sort of getting into the work. Right. No, definitely. And they have some big things coming up in the next few months because uh, Prince Harry's case is actually headed to trial next year. So we wanted to know if he's going to be taking the stand, what that means for the trial, what the outcome may be. So to break it all down is West Coast trial lawyer Nima Romani. Take a look. So why would Harry seem even move forward with the phone hacking case if they knew that it fell outside of the six year limit? Well, Sheena, it was a tough, tough argument because of the statute of limitations. You know, there in Britain, it's six years. And, you know, the British Parliament looked into this. There was a commission that found you know, these violations by the British press. So what Prince Harry tried to argue unsuccessfully was that, you know, there was some sort of tolling agreement or that he didn't understand his right to mm-hmm. sue. And therefore, the clock didn't start running because, you know, there was some agreement between the royal family and the press where, um, you know, the members of the royal family wouldn't file this lawsuit. Mm-hmm. And the judge said, no, no, no. Everyone knew about this. You know, you're a sophisticated person. You have lawyers. You should have known about your rights. So the clock started running as soon as you became aware. There wasn't this fraud or cover up that pre- prevented the statute from running. So right. those cases were dismissed. But we're still going to get a trial because a lot of cases settle. But I think this is the type of case where the prince really wants to send a message. You know, he does not like those British tabloids and the very antagonistic adversarial relationships. So I think he's going to push this case to trial to teach them a lesson. This isn't yeah. about money. This is about justice. Right. Do you think Harry's going to uh, take the stand then? And like you said before, um, he's probably not looking for a monetary, um, a, a big monetary amount. I'm sure it wouldn't hurt, but um, I'm sure it's yeah. it's more about the principle. I think so. And I think this type of case, you have to take the stand. You have to talk about how you were hurt, what your damages are. You know, this isn't you know, a criminal case where the, the right to remain silent or anything like this. this is a civil lawsuit. So if you're going to bring a civil lawsuit, I don't care if you're suing Lizzo or you're suing uh, the British tablets. You have to take the stand as a plaintiff. So that's what's going to happen in this case. I would bet that Prince Harry is definitely going to be there. Whether or not he takes the uh, takes the stand um, is to be seen. But he has been very um, active in this and wants to prove a point. So I'm, I would bet that he would be there. 
Yeah, I think it, it's really interesting every time that he has a lawsuit that he shows up and, you know, it really creates for some really, really interesting stories. Hopefully this doesn't backfire. Hopefully it just, you know, furthers his case sort of um, with reform in the media. Fingers crossed. Fingers crossed. All right, let's get into our pint-sized palettes. And Queen Camilla's former daughter-in-law is spilling the tea on what she's like as a grandmother. So while appearing on the UK talk show Lorraine, uh, Lorraine Sarah Parker Bowles said the Queen is totally devoted to her grandkids. Now, she was previously married to Camilla's son, Tom Parker Bowles, and they share daughter Lola, who is 16, and son Freddie, who is 13. And she was also at the coronation. She said she's an amazing granny. She's really hands-on and she's really into it. She wants to know everything that they're into. She loves jewelry and she's really knowledgeable about it. Lola is obsessed as well. So they always chat about that. So it seems like she is a great grandmother and loves to be involved. And um, I totally see that. I really love this. You know, she is, her grandchildren are clearly so important to her. Remember her, their names were embroidered on her coronation. Mm -hmm. Um, And every single day she wears a necklace with their initials on it. So it's just, she's very much granny. I think probably off duty, she's probably a very normal granny, you know, sort of trying to take an interest in what they're interested in and and spending time with her grandchildren. And then on duty, she's the queen of England. Yes, it's definitely two different, totally different lives. I would imagine. (laughs) All right, well, that is it for this week's episode of Royally Ask Christine. Thank you so much, as always. Fun. Yes. All right. Keep commenting. Keep subscribing. We'll see you guys next week. Bye. For more news content and exclusive interviews, make sure to hit the sub, like, and bell button down below and visit usmagazine.com.